Okay, I got to do one for YouTube. I had my YouTube's tied a long time ago, but you know, they're tied with Facebook. The Facebook is a vertical look at, at life on the camera. And the uh, YouTube is a side look, you know, it's like IMAX and Dolby Sound. Gee, I can hardly wait till we get all that and everybody's home. But this is it, everybody is everything now. You know, like they used to say in the old neighborhood, everything is everything. And people used to live very differently before we had these uh, electronic connections. Uh, if you want to ruin a country, get rid of the electricity. That'll be the end of it. Then we'll live like a third world nation, which has a part-time electric. They don't dare cook on electric stoves. They don't have electric dryers. They don't have battery chargers. They don't use the cell phone the way we do. So if you lose the electricity, you, you kind of lost a country. So what we got to do is really protect our electricity more than anything, because that's what runs the country. If you keep the, uh, the power and light company going, then I think we're still going to be okay. You know, then you have communication. You got the lights and the uh, sound and everything else that you need in the, in the house. Air conditioning, if you're in Florida, or heat in the winter, which we uh, usually have in Buffalo, the reverse. Uh, and I think somewhere along the line, we got to realize that the uh, country is broke and we can't borrow any more money from the treasury because we don't have any more in there. It's like going to your father and asking him when he's not working. Uh, it's not a good thing. <laughs> so we got to find out a way to make money. And one of the things we can do is to sell a piece of our country. I think the piece we ought to sell is Camp David, the White House, uh, everything in, at the Pentagon. <laughs> We're not using them anyway. <laughs> They're using us. <laughs> no, seriously, we gotta we gotta figure out something here. I mean, you know, people gotta go back to work. I gotta go back to work. I'm I'm not retired. And even our own fund, you know, our AFTRA and SAG and all this stuff that we belong to with the unions and the medical plans, they're all tied into the marketplace doing well. And we had everything going real well in this country for a while. I wasn't getting a piece of the pie, but at least I could admire the crust. And uh, I, liked, I liked the idea that I could, uh, I had the hope that one day I would win the lottery. That's why the line is longer for the lottery than it is for uh, public assistance, because we all want to have the big, big money. If you got the big money, you can't spend it anyway, because there's nowhere to go. Uh, what are you going to do? You can't travel. You can't go on cruises. You can't have the people over the house anymore. You can't buy expensive cuts of meat. Well, you can do that. Uh, you don't have anyone to cook it for you. You got to do it yourself. And there's nobody going to give you a, a car wash. I mean, you know, oh, wow. <laughs> that's the most important thing, right? Have that, have that lawn mowed and the car wash. Wow. Uh, that's a, rich people think a little different. They smell good, too. Uh, so we have a different kind of a world that we live in right now, and it's uh, going to get a lot more different as it goes on. We're going back to the cave, and I'm going to have to uh, do something that I never wanted to do before, which is get a job. <laughs> I thought I had, I had it knocked. I was on the radio. That's not work. All that is is just bitching at everything. I mean, that, that's, that's a preoccupation. It's not even an occupation. It's a, a hobby. It's not even that. It's a necessity. <laughs> it's an American. That's the privilege that we have in America. That's the one that's missing in the Constitution. The right to privilege. Uh, to uh, uh, bitch. <laughs> not privilege. <laughs> I should be so lucky. Uh, so I am. I'm very lucky. I'm, I'm glad to be alive. As you see behind me, there's my audience sitting in those chairs cheering me on. I'm like a bad game of baseball. <laughs> I had those cardboard figures on my TV show when I couldn't get an audience. They were, the back row was painted. I think you know that. I've shown that on television before when I was on the air in Miami. I was in a Latin neighborhood and everybody spoke uh, Spanish and they didn't know about my TV show on Channel 10. So uh, we had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun uh, talking to an audience of cardboard that was painted. <laughs> it's pretty good actually when the audience doesn't answer you back. There's, you know, it, it kind of cuts down on the heckling. And it, it makes for uh, for comedy. See, I learned to laugh at my own jokes because I don't want to rely on strangers. And that's just the way it is. It's, a, it's, it's now an occupation. <laughs> so that's the hazard. The hazard of occupation is that someone may show up behind me there. Then I got to put on a mask. I got to be ready on television. You understand? I'm going deaf and they can't, and, and you can't hear anybody anyway. So, uh, I, I've been escaping all the political announcements. And of course, famously, I said that the President of the United States has a brother who's in the hospital and uh, he had some heart surgery. And the President had to go to visit him because he tried mailing him a card. 
The mail's slow. That guy would be gone by the time he got a card, if that's the case. It's a uh, Reynolds wrap. 